Okay, your ice pot's gonna come in a crate. On the side, you'll have a label. The label will have your serial number on it. Please record this number down. That's this number right here. In the future, if you're ever gonna need any servicing or parts, or you need us to find you in the system, that number is gonna help us find you, all right? So, I would tear the crating off once you get it close to being on spot, and we'll uh, go from there, talk to you in a bit. Okay, once we have all the wrapping off, we have some goodies inside for you. There's a uh, placard to go on the wall, just reminding everyone to keep clean before they get in. Got a set of steps. Complimentary for you. Got a handheld jet lap box, and we have some startup chemicals. We'll jump back to all these while it's filling. Right now, let's run around. Let's take a look at the other side of the tub. When you're filling it up, this box right here, the square, that's where your filter is. So you have a floating weir door. There's a little arrow two thirds of the way up this door, right where my finger is right now. That arrow is your optimum water level. So when you're filling the water up, this is gonna be laying down, it'll float up. As long as you come up to about that arrow there, it's good. You can come up close to the top without a person in the tub, that'll be good. Don't ever go over top of this with the filling, otherwise it's not gonna filter correctly. The filter is located inside of here. So, we'll lift this basket up, it comes up, 90 degree turn towards you, and lifts out. That's how the basket comes out. Next, there's a little top piece onto the filter. There's an adjustment, always leave this wide open so as much flow as possible can come through the filter. And then last, we have the filter. This can all be exchanged with the tub full of water. We recommend, I would say change the filter. If you have in regular use, change the filter every month for sure. If uh, it's not used that much, I would change it regardlessly every three months. Filter goes back in. Filter cap piece goes back in. Basket. There's a little bit of a shelf here. So you got the shelf goes to the bottom. You have the handle on the far side. So the handle goes at the top. Sets in, 90 degree turn, drops down, fold it back in, all right? This here is your uh, salt cell. This cell is a sacrificial piece. It needs to be replaced every six months to a year. And it's replaceable, all we're gonna do, this can be changed with it full of water as well. We're gonna unthread, has some holes so you can change it out of the water. This is so that the uh, connection, electrical connection inside doesn't get wet. Next you would take this little Phillips screw right here, we'd unscrew that screw, it's a set screw holding it in place, under the screw, unthread the uh, cell, just like a light bulb type of deal, changing that. Thread the new one in, tuck all this cable back in, do her up like that. Okay, we're going to fill this guy up, we'll go from there, talk to you in a bit. Now that it's filling, we'll set up the steps. We found a really cool set of steps, simple to put together, nice and safe, out of plastic, right out of the box. So as it's filling up, we'll assemble these. There is instructions inside of the box. You got two steps that are identical to each other, and pretty much. That's it, set up. So for putting the steps down, you can put them in a couple places. In this application, we're gonna set them right there. We come closer, your seat is right here. So you're gonna to wanna to use the seat as your step to get into the cold tub. So when you're stepping into your ice pod, you're gonna use this as a step to go down, okay? Back. Otherwise, you can have them right at the end, because at the end, there's your control pad on the far side over there, all right? In fact, while I have the time, just for filming purposes, we're gonna slide this out a bit. 
just so you can uh, see what's going to happen at the handle there. So we can step in from that side as well. This side with the control panel, very important. Your chiller is right inside of this grill. We need air movement. We need air movement access to this side for this grill. And if we come around to the far side, down here is another grill. That's your air inlet. So air is going to come in one side, out the other side. This cannot be blocked off and tucked into a wall. We need to have the water air run through there to go past the unit to run the chiller properly. So just make that note of that, please. So open the chemicals. There's a uh, tear strip that pulls off all the way around. Open this up and we'll go through all of these in time. The main thing I want to get to first off is the cold water dead sea salt, which is this pail right here. So it has a little tap, it comes off as well. You can open that up. Now to dissolve the salt into the water, salt doesn't dissolve into cold water very easily. So you're going to get a little pail, something to hold some water, have like a half a gallon, a gallon of warm water to dissolve the salt in. Then you want to take, for the ice pot, it's one cup, eight ounces of salt. So I've got just a uh, kind of a shake, protein shake type of container here. So I can measure my eight ounces. There we are. We're going to seal this salt up and you're not going to use it again. If the sanitized levels go down, we're going to adjust it on the computer. We're not going to add more salt. One cup of salt for this body of water, that's it, until you drain it and fill it again. If you add salt, you're going to put too much salt in the water and you're going to have problems with the equipment breaking down because you're going to have too much salt. You're going to make the water corrosive. So, eight ounces, that's it. Please. Then we're gonna take that eight ounces. Gonna mix it in some warm water. Whatever you have around to mix it in. I found a little kind of spatula stick. We just wanna make sure it gets dissolved. Like I said, it won't dissolve very well in the cold water. And then we can just pour that solution into the water. Done. Okay, over here, now we're going to turn the unit on. You can see you have over here, you have the control pad, and you have your plug-in. This plug-in is a ground fault circuit interrupter, which means if there's any type of short of any sort within the water, it is automatically going to shut off for safety reasons, okay? Automatically, when it's plugged in, it's off. We'll take a look. You can read. The red says reset. The yellow says test. All right, so test is to test it. Reset means to start it up. So I push the reset, little red light comes on, and this is illuminated. If you want to test that it works, hit the orange button or the yellow button, it clicks, shuts off. Red button, turns it back on again. Go over the controls, if you come up close here, we're going to explain how these are operated. Right now it has a 43F on it for 43 degrees Fahrenheit. This is flashing. That symbol represents the filter cycle, so it's suspended right now because I pressed a button. There's no need to worry about that. So if it's 43 degrees Fahrenheit, I can adjust the temperature with the up or down arrow. If I hit the down arrow, a little thermometer icon will appear and it says 42. That means the set temperature is 42. Now it resorted back to the actual temperature of the water. Again, back goes 42 with the little thermometer. That disappears. That's your actual temperature of the water. Now, to change some settings on it, this is a button that changes your settings. You're going to press it. It says SETT for settings. ON represents your sanitizer. That can go down to zero and up to 24. This represents hours in the day. So up to 24 hours a day, it can run straight. 
down to zero hours a day that it's going to run producing your sanitizer. This is for the salt system. For a spa or for a tub of this size, I would recommend if you're going to have some regular use, I would put it at three. That's a good start. If you're going to use it every day, have it setting at three hours a day for the sanitizer to run. Next setting, filter duration. The duration is how long the filter cycle is going to run for. Now that can run all the way up to six, down to zero. Filter duration, we're going to run it at one hour, okay? So filter duration is going to run for a one hour period. Press this uh, settings button again, it goes to filter frequency. So it's going to run one hour frequency two times a day. So the filter cycle means the pump one is going to run on low speed for one hour, two hours a day. So we went into settings. Sanitizers three hours, duration one hour, filter frequency, and it does a reset on the system. So it's just going to go over the software that's installed into the system and it goes back to what the filter or what the temperature setting is and we're set. Oh, it's going to move my knee is sore. All right, this button is a standby button. It goes on standby. This is for servicing reasons only. There's no need to use it, so you can just leave that alone. Pump one button. This is for your pump running. Press it once, it goes on to low speed. Press it a second time, it goes on to high speed. This is for your water circulating inside of the top. Press it a third time, it's off. Pump two. It's a generic top side. There is no pump two in this tub, so you don't worry about it. This is for another option that's not in there. And this is for your light. So we can press that light, that button, the light will turn on. The light's going to turn off. Now, see if I turn this up to go into a heat cycle. And we'll just wait for it to register. It takes a bit because it does a reset every little period of time. All right. So now the pump is started on low speed. And you'll see the icon on the far side with the two lines. This is a symbol for your heat. So it's flashing, which means it wants to heat. It's doing a diagnostics check to make sure it's safe to turn the heater on. It's going to do this for 30 seconds, flashing. Then it went solid. It went solid, meaning the heater is now turned on. So the pump is running on low speed, circulating the water through the heater. The heater did a check. It's OK. The heater's on, and it's running solid. This little icon here over the one is flashing because the pump one is on low speed. If I press the pump one again, put it on high speed, it goes solid. So a flashing icon is low speed pump one, solid icon is high speed pump one. Because when the pump goes on to high speed, it draws too many amps, that it won't allow the heater and the pump to run at the same time. So it'll disable the heater while the pump is on high speed. That's why the heater's flashing. It'll do its quick diagnostics for 30 seconds. Then it will go solid, and the heater will be operating again with the pump one on low speed. We're going to do the temperature down. Set it for 42. This little symbol here, this triangle, is for your chiller. So that's the one that's going to turn on when the chiller is activated. It's, we have it set for 42, but it's at 43. It has to do a 2 degree differential before it's going to allow the chiller to turn on. So I'm just going to explain it to you for this purpose. That's where the icon will turn on for the chiller when it's running or not. And then again, there's the icon. See the light? Icon comes on when the light is running. So that pretty much explains the top side controls to you. We'll come up to the top. You can just stay there and kind of look in on the spa. Turn the light on. You can see where the light is. Down the bottom, see the water light up and off. Water lights up and off. Just stay right here. This box right here has a little handheld jet in it for you if you want, along with the owner's manual that explains everything that I'm running over right now. So this little handheld jet, because you're sitting in a tub that you're above the water, if you wanted to get to your neck or a shoulder, something like that, we can unthread this jet right here. Thread this guy in. And then, has a handle. There we go. So that's threaded in. 
And then this turns the jet off and on with this dial right here. And that will just allow the uh, cold water to go on some uh, upper body parts. Shut that off. Thread that out so we can put this jet back in. Okay, on to the rest of the chemicals. I'm going to explain the rest of these guys to you. You have cold water balance. Cold water balance raises the alkalinity of the water. For any measurement, because it's a small body, I would never put any more than a tablespoon of chemical at a time, maybe even a teaspoon at a time to do some adjustments. So cold water balance raises your alkalinity. Cold water rundown lowers your alkalinity. The first thing you're ever going to test is your alkalinity. Alkalinity affects pH and affects your sanitize levels for your chlorine. So first thing you're going to do is your alkalinity and those are what are going to adjust it up and down and show you how to use these test strips quick. They're like a type of litmus paper. Close it up after you pull the strip out so you don't contaminate anything inside. We dip it in the water. Then we're going to color match up, up and down. So alkalinity is in the center from 0 to 240. 80 to 120 is your optimum. The alkalinity is very high in this. So we're going to want to drop the alkalinity in this tub right now, okay? So what we're going to do to do that is we're going to use the cold water rundown. Next, we're going to check the pH, which the pH is high, but we don't want to worry about that until the alkalinity is done. So we've dropped the alkalinity down. We're closer to the 80-120 range. Our pH matches up in line where it should be between 7.2 7.8. And we need some sanitizer now. So the last thing we're going to check is our sanitizer. Cold water sanitizer, it's granular chlorine. Now you do not need to add this all the time because the salt system will produce the sanitizer for you, but we're just starting up and we want to have something in there. So I'm just going to measure, use a teaspoon really is what you want to put in. But we're going to put a teaspoon of sanitizer, which is your granular chlorine. That's going to go in. So we have sanitizer, our alkalinity is checked, pH check, sanitizer check. We're good to go. If we needed to adjust the pH to raise it, it's cold water jump. I don't think you're ever going to need this because the process of electrolysis, which is making the sanitizer through the salt water in the cell, naturally increases your pH level. More than likely, you're going to be using, say, every two weeks, you're going to be putting like a level teaspoon of cold water rundown just to drop the pH. Everything else should stay in check. Last two chemicals we have here that come with it is cold water bubble remover. This is you're going to get bubbles uh, usually from detergents in the clothing from the athletes getting in the tub or cosmetics, um, hair cosmetics, facial cosmetics, stuff like that. It's going to get in the water and create bubbles. So it's just a flip top that you can give a little squirt, squirt an ounce in. It'll get rid of all the bubbles on it. And then last, is cold water cleaner. I don't think you're ever really going to use it on a tub this size. This is if your water becomes dirty, unmanageable, and you want to clean it up, you can add a couple of ounces of this into the cold or into the ice pod and let it circulate for about a day to two days and it's going to gather all the contaminants inside of the water. They'll get trapped in the filter, change the filter out, you got clean water. But realistically, if your water's looking bad in this, just drain it, wipe it down, top it up again, and you're good to go. All cold tubs come with a cover. Please make sure you use the cover uh, just for efficiency. I know it's a bit of a pain to have it taken it off, put it on, having somewhere to put it while you're using cold tub. But when not in use, it really cuts down on the amount of uh, energy that's consumed to maintain a water temperature if it's raising it or lowering it. Okay, one last thing, draining your ice pod. Here's the drain right here, it's cylinder style. So when it pops all the way out, 
You can take this off. I'm going to make a little bit of a mess here just to explain it. So that's all the way out. You can thread your garden hose on. You press it in. Water comes out. Pull it out. It stops. And when it's all the way in, it's off as well. So there's a cap just to make sure she's sealed up. Pressed all the way in. That's just some residue inside of the, uh, the cylinder that's in there. Clean that out. It drips for a little bit. That's normal. So don't be concerned when it happens to you. And that's the drain. Again, though, something of this size, you could just bail it out probably a lot faster. Running off a garden hose to your closest drains. Going to take you probably two hours. You could grab a bucket and have it done in 10 minutes.